Oh, hi. You were expecting, like, some sort of funny intro? Now, when I first received the Star Wars Shatterpoint box from Asmodee, I focused on the miniatures and showing you guys how cool these miniatures looked when they were painted up. A few other people on YouTube did the whole, let's paint the entire box in two days. But I wanted to actually enjoy painting these miniatures because they're really cool. So I'm just about getting around to do the terrain now. And I thought what I'd do is take a look at all the other tutorials online and see if we can condense some of the best ideas and the best tips on painting them down into a shorter process. As always, the goal is not to give competition level of painting. It is to get stuff done as quickly as possible so it's ready for gaming whilst also having it look pretty decent and not just basic. To start off with, I'm gonna prime the miniatures using a rattle can from Colorforge. And because I want to go with fairly close to the box art, I'm gonna go with desert sand to give us a nice base to build up from in later steps. Next, we're moving on to using the airbrush for step two. And this is where we're gonna get the majority of our main colors down. So we're using skeleton burn from Army Paint in the Air range for our main wall color, that lighter color and we're going to airbrush this all on. Now a lot of people don't like the way that this sort of technique looks, just airbrushing the colour on, but we're going to fix that later on when we add a little bit of texture. This is just to get the base colours down, the majority of the painting down, so that from this point on we're just refining what we've done in previous steps. So I'm not being particularly accurate, being particularly neat with this, it doesn't matter if it's a bit patchy and a bit all over the place because that adds to that realism, having the random colours and the different colours showing through. Next, we're having Dwarven Skin from Two Thin Coats paint range. Thin that down a bit in your airbrush and just go over some of those shadowed areas around the edges and stuff. Again, just to add a little bit more variety so that there's not just one colour for the entire wall. For the walkways and the support structures around the edge, I'm using Death Reaper from Two Thin Coats. Again, just thin that down a little bit in the airbrush and chuck it on. And at this point, you don't really need to worry about being super neat. You can go over a little bit onto the wall because it'll just look like weathering or damage or something. And you also don't need to particularly worry about getting one full complete cover on all the areas that you want painting black. It doesn't matter that these are a little bit patchy because we're going to fix it with a later step. And because we didn't go back over for that second coat, it saved us a lot of time, meaning that this process so far has taken about half an hour. The next step, which is where we're going to fix uh, all the patchy areas and where we're going to add some texture back into the terrain so that it's not just flat walls, is by dry brushing and stippling. So I'm using a lighter grey here for on the black areas, just stippling that on, going all over the area first. And then once I've got the majority of that paint off from the dry brush, so there's even less paint on, I'm going over and just sort of rubbing it in. So what that does is it smooths out that texture so that it's not quite as in your face, but also leaves it showing. And this is a really cool technique for adding texture to terrain and things like this without having to go into super amounts of detail. I'm doing the same thing for the rest of the wall using the same sort of skeleton burn sort of colour, going over that, adding in texture, rubbing it in. And what it does is it blends everything together, it smooths it all over, but it leaves the texture showing. And it also catches all the sharp edges as well and gives those a natural highlight. To break up those big flat walls, we're going to add a little bit of extra detail. This is one that I've taken from Sarastro, I think I saw it in one of his videos, so go and check his channel out, I'll link it down below. Just add a couple of bits of masking tape and then just stipple on different colours, and then when you peel that off, it'll look like faded detail paint on there. Because we're going for the worn look, I decided to stipple on the metallic paint on all the walkways and the metallic areas. This makes sure that it looks the same as the rest of the buildings, all worn and used, whilst also speeding up the process so I don't need to, once again, do a full coverage. I can just stipple that on and leave a bit of that black base coat showing through. For this next step, for all the detail work, there's no real fast way to do this. You can pick out as many of the details or as few of the details as you like. I decided to pick out the majority of them, I just painted the cables in, painted all the electronic boxes in, I did all that sort of stuff. Because the more you do on this step, the more realistic it will look, the more detailed it will look. You can just sort of chuck a wash on things or leave them a certain colour. There's some of the boxes and things that I left in the sort of sandy stone colour. I didn't paint them separate, like the dividing lines and the walls and things like that. But the more detail you put in at this step, the better the terrain will look. 
I decided to go back to the airbrush to add in a few special details now that the majority of the terrain was painted, like all the glowy lights, the screens on different panels and stuff. Added a little bit of OSL on these. You don't, again, you don't have to do this. This is just something I wanted to do as an extra step. And because I'd saved so much time earlier on in the process of painting this terrain, I felt like I'd got enough time to spend just adding these extra few details. If you spend a little bit of extra time on these little detail bits, it'll make the entire thing pop that much more. Now for the final step is the weathering, and that is just to sort of tie it all together, make it look properly warm. So what I'm doing first is using a sepia wash. I'm spraying this through the airbrush around the bottom of each piece of terrain. And what this is gonna do is emulate sort of dirt being blown up on the streets or on the planet for wherever this terrain is. I'm gonna put this up around some of the edges and things like that just to add a little bit of shading in. And then we're gonna move on to using some pigments just to add another different sort of texture, a different finish. This dries very matte. Once you've dusted it off, it adds that dustiness to it. Again, so it's showing that like dirt blowing up and blowing around the buildings. And it was also a good way to add different colors in and blend those quite well. Using stuff like this is not only a great way to speed up the process, but it's also a good way to sell sort of realism and believability of these being on a planet. It's adding in another different type of texture, another different finish. And that's kind of what I do whenever I'm doing any sort of terrain or board builds or anything like that. Add as many different things in as you can so that it's not all just the same finish. Same thing for miniature painting too. Now, I know that I said that the last step was the final step, but this is the actual final, final step. This terrain took me about three hours, I think, in total to paint all the pieces of terrain. And I've put that work in, and now I need to make sure that it's protected when I'm transporting it around to various different gaming clubs and friends' houses. It's just gonna get chucked in a box. I don't want this paint to get chipped off and worn off. So to protect it, I'm gonna varnish it, and I'm just gonna use a spray rattle can from Colorforge, I'm gonna use their matte varnish. Honestly, I've had bad experiences with varnish sprays in the past, but since using the Colorforge one, it's sort of reintroduced me to varnishing finished projects because this just works. I've not had any issues with frosting or anything. So if you're looking for a matte varnish, a color varnish in a spray can form, I can't recommend this one enough. And now that it's all varnished, it dulls down the metallic, it helps it blend in with the rest of the piece so it doesn't stand out quite as much. And that's the terrain finished. I've had an absolute blast working on this. I really like this type of terrain that's not absolutely chock full of details. It's got nice flat panels so you can add your own details in and add your own things in, but it's still got built-in things like the doors and the panels and the lights and pipes and stuff like that. It's quite good. It's a nice middle ground between too detailed and too bland. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. If you have, leave a like down below and a comment. Let me know what you think about the terrain and the process. I'll catch you in the next one, guys, and until then, enjoy your hobby.